back. The Fix is live. I'm your host, Ryan Rothstein, hanging out here in the Prop Swap studios of AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio. We have John McMullen on the line, and he joins us every night on The Fix, Monday to Friday at 7.30. And make sure you follow John at J.F. McMullen on Twitter. New show, Birds 365. Johnny Mac and Jody Mac, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, on phillyvoice.com and Jacob Media YouTube channel. Extending the play every Saturday at 10 a.m. SI.com, phillyvoice.com is where you can find all of John's written work. All right, let's bring John into the conversation now. We have plenty to get to. Of course, more news related to the NFL draft. The Atlanta Falcons saying, ah, maybe we'll, we'll trade out. We'll see. We'll take phone calls. Phone lines are open for the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, and a new story from John that we're going to have to get into regarding a quarterback down in Houston. John, how are we doing tonight? Doing well, Ryan. How are you? Um, you're right about that Sean Watson thing today. A little crazy down there. So uh, that's an issue that's interesting because it involves the Eagles. And obviously people get excited about that. <laughs> well, any news around the Eagles you know, fans get excited, whether it's positive or, or negative. They get worked up even negatively, as, as we all know. That's most of the time. Uh, but what, what are the Eagles doing as it relates to Deshaun Watson? Because any time you hear the name Deshaun Watson right now, it's, uh, it's a negative reaction given all of the um, you know, allegations and civil lawsuits that are coming out. Yeah, it's interesting you bring up those words because uh, I, I do think there's a, a, a bit of a almost moral dichotomy there. Is this a positive or is this a negative? Because it's pretty clear um, Sean Watson's not going to play for the Houston Texans again. So, um, you know, if you look at it from a football-only standpoint, um, and, and remember, I mean, the first part of this is there are so many ways this can go from – uh, pretty stark differences from um, a small suspension all the way to let's let's be honest prison time with never playing football again that that's that's what we're talking about that's the concern uh, for, for Deshaun Watson because these are some pretty pretty serious allegations and you're talking about uh, 22 different cases now. Uh, two of them came out today and offered um, some explanation and, and claim to the allegations. Uh, and it, it's interesting because earlier um, in the week, Aaron Wilson, who works for the Houston Chronicle, had mentioned the Eagles specifically and the Miami Dolphins as the two teams that are sort of keeping an eye very closely on what's going on with Deshaun Watson. Yeah, it's um, and that's where it gets a little bit interesting. So, forget the Eagles for a second, but this could relate to them. How how does a team know if and when they should make a trade for Deshaun Watson? Is there any chance something happens before? Because we might not get a final quote unquote verdict with exactly what is going on with him until I mean, who knows when? Six months? Eight months? You you don't know. Yeah. It could be a, a tremendously long time, and that's, you know, at first it, it has to go with the Houston Texans, and it's interesting because obviously Carolina made the move for Sam Darnold yesterday, and and the Panthers, if you talk to people around the league, that was the team people were focusing on as the so-called leader in the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes because no matter what they said publicly, um, the Texans said, pretty much come to the conclusion that they were going to have to trade Deshaun Watson. Now, this is before any of these allegations surfaced and the fact that he wanted out of Houston, um, didn't like the organization, and, and that was his take before any of this even happened. So, I, I mean, the fact that the Panthers tapped out and went in a different direction kind of tells you all you need to know is the fact that Look, I mean, you can't trade for this guy right now. Um, 
Now, if you want to be cynical about it, you could try to acquire him at a basement, sort of bargain basement price and roll the dice and hope uh, you know, maybe you do your due diligence, maybe you do your own investigating as much as you can do and try to figure out what the heck is going on and maybe go in that direction. But, boy, man, I, I can't imagine, especially, Ryan, in today's environment, which is so just politically charged, I can't imagine any team would go down that route. I certainly can't imagine the Philadelphia Eagles would, but... You know, then again, this is the team that signed Michael Vick. <laughs> and there were a lot of people not happy with that. And they, they bit the bullet. Now, different circumstances in that, you know, Michael went to prison and they could spin it as he paid his debt to society. Um, and that's not the case in an open-ended situation. And then finally, to be honest, you don't know what the league, if the league would allow it. Because the league might come out tomorrow and say, you know, we're going to put this guy on the commissioner's exempt list and put him in this stasis until this entire thing is just cleared up, good or bad. Yeah, I mean, the Michael Vick situation, and it's so wild, and I'm not like a judge. I'm not like the morality police, like what's right, what's wrong. I'll, I'll let you know. I, you know, it's all open-ended, like you said, but it's almost, Michael Vick was almost in a better situation going to prison as it relates to playing in the NFL again, because not saying he spun anything, but okay, I made a mistake. I got caught up in something I shouldn't have been caught up in. Here's exactly what happened. Uh, I, I, I paid my dues, I went to jail, and now I'm looking to rebuild both personally and professionally. Here with Deshaun Watson, best case for him, he doesn't go to jail, he gets a small suspension, fine, whatever, and it's going to be so open-ended for interpretation that he's never really going to be able to bounce back character-wise 100% from this, where Michael Vick, you have the passionate animal people, but he kind of was able to do that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you're right, except for that small group. And by the way, I'm in that group. I am the sure. crazy animal lover. But, the, the, you know, beyond that, I, I never said, look, I mean, unfortunately, those are the bulls. And I, I was pretty consistent in saying he deserved a second chance because he did uh, pay the price. And, and on, on, that's unfortunately, those are the rules. But uh, you're right in the in the case of Deshaun Watson. I mean, he he's never going to recover from this reputation wise. He just isn't. Especially in in again, I I, re, I point back to this environment we're in right now, and you see it playing out in real time in in, in politics all the time. You have to believe women until you don't have to believe women, depending on what you know political side of the aisle you're on. And people twist themselves in the pretzels because politics has become sports and everybody has their favorite team. So it depends what team they're rooting for. And there's going to be a whole heck of a lot of people who say, you know, 20, wherever we end up, we're currently at over 20. Women have accused Deshaun Watson of doing uh, some pretty serious things. And you, you can see it, you know, with anybody who's been accused of those types of things, it's not its not something that goes away. It just isn't. So if you want to go back again to the beginning of this, when it was just Deshaun Watson didn't like the Houston Texans, didn't like the way the McNairs ran the organization, remember Jack Easterby was the villain at that time, and he was the guy everybody loved. And the guy everybody stood up for and said he was a great guy. In fact, you know, the woman who accused him of of sexual assault today said exactly that. Everybody thought Deshaun Watson was a good guy, and she doesn't want this to happen to any other woman. That's, That's where we are. That's how things have drastically changed for him. He's no longer the good guy. No, certainly not, at least at this uh, present moment. You know, I remember asking you a few times, John, on different appearances here that you have nightly, can the Eagles make a big-time trade for a quarterback 
um, you know, once they made the trade back to, to 12 this year in the draft, then the stories come out, well, do they go for Russell Wilson next year? Could they go for him this year? What about the Sean Watson, you know, before all of this? But now this is sort of circulating again, coming to the surface. Is there a chance, like what percent do you put on it? I hate to make you do that, but just to give us an idea that the Eagles actually could make a trade with those assets they've been acquiring for a Deshaun Watson. Well, I, I would put it right now, it, I'll, I'll put it at 1%, <laughs> just because nothing is impossible. Um, they, they would never do it under the current circumstances. But, you know, we are where we are with the Eagles and the fact that they have sort of unofficially pledged uh, 2021, the 2021 season to Jalen Hurts. And that's it. And then it's up to Jalen Hurts. And I think the best-case scenario is that he develops and shows himself to be a a really competent option who's going to be a long-term starter in this league. And, and that would be the best-case scenario for the Eagles because then they could use all these assets, the potential three first-round picks to build up around Jalen Hurts, who would still be on his rookie contract and still be cost-effective. Uh, on the other hand, whoever it is, uh, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, throw him in because um, he doesn't want to be in Green Bay. We've been talking about that for a long time. People are starting to wake up to that, and this might be his last season uh, with the Packers. Um, and then Deshaun Watson, if things go in a positive direction for him and say, as we said, the best-case scenario is say is Ezekiel Elliott. He gets suspended six games, something of that nature. Uh, people will forget uh, because of his talent. And then all of a sudden you could argue the Eagles might get a bargain, at least as far as uh, assets having to be sent uh, to Houston. Maybe uh, a little bit of a markdown, so to speak. Now, you're still going to have to pay him a ton of money, uh, and then it would come down to Jeffrey Lurie, and that's a Jeffrey Lurie decision. Nobody else would he approve um, that reputation coming into his organization. Uh, ultimately, to be honest, I would think I, I think he would, uh, and and do it the same thing he did with Michael Vick and say everybody deserves a second chance. Um, you know, he did it with Sean Jackson last year. Yeah, uh, with with the Anna semantic stuff so um he would lean on that i believe uh but again there's so many ifs into that and and the biggest if is things have to go in a positive direction for sean watson obviously if he's in prison none of this matters <laughs> yeah that would be uh that would be a challenge uh, unless they maybe let him go play every Sunday, I don't know. Um, all right, so <laughs> the California Penal League, like Charlie Sheen, in the it, major league. Yeah, exactly. Um, what's the remake with Adam Sandler? Um, uh, he didn't make it. He, he, he remade the Longest Yard. Longest Yard, it? yes. 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 There we go. Uh, good stuff there. That was important info. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, what type of year would Jalen Hurts have to have where we're sitting here saying this time next year, well, why would you trade for a 33-year-old Russell Wilson uh, after what we just saw from J a young Jalen Hurts? I'm saying right now I've, I'm already advocating go get Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> what? After his performance I, I, last night? I would love to see that. Uh, there's no way uh, it, anything Jalen Hurts could do uh, that put him on that level, that kind of platform. And, you know, there's so many. I, I don't even – Aaron Rodgers is from California. You know, you just saw uh, with him hosting Jeopardy, that sort of is what he wants to do uh, post-NFL career, and he wants to be out in California. So I'm not even sure he would in, in even think about playing for the Eagles. But – if you could develop some kind of Peyton Manning like situation when he went to Denver and sort of you could you could turn this around like that with literally Aaron Rodgers and um you know two first round picks, um this team could be right back on top. But I that's very unrealistic. 
Uh, so it comes down to the fact that, you know, what would he have to do for you to look away from Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers? I, I, I don't think uh, that much um, because I, I, as long as the Eagles see enough and say this guy is going to be a long-term starting quarterback, and again, to me, that doesn't, it's not about wins, it's not about statistics, because this team knows it's rebuilding. This team knows they're in a transition. They don't have great skill, position, talent. But if he shows the other stuff, the leadership, the intangibles, the ability to make plays, uh, the upside, because of his contract, I think the Eagles will be you know, very happy with that, and they won't go looking. But if he, you know what's the bed, that's when I think they say, okay, you know, we got to go do something at this most important position. And that's what Howie Roseman has done well, and I've said pretty consistently, and I wrote in Philly Voice, he's given this team options, and that's what you need to have an insurance policy. So if he doesn't play well and we're sitting here next year in advance of the draft, well, they can do anything. Whoever uh, the top five picks are going to be a quarterback next year, and I know people say it's not going to be a good quarterback draft. Well, Zach Wilson wasn't supposed to be the second pick in the draft. He was supposed to be a third-round pick at this time last year. So my point is things change pretty quickly, and there will be somebody uh, that – that NFL scouts start to think belongs at the top of the draft. Uh, and the Eagles will most likely have those three first round picks so they can do whatever they need to do to get up there. Or, you know, we've talked about Jeffrey Lurie a lot over the past number of weeks. If he starts to get, uh, as he tends to do now, uh, you know, a little antsy, a little anxiety, a little skittish about two consecutive bad seasons. And he might go to Howard Roseman and say, we got to stop this. And the only way to stop it is to go get a proven veteran quarterback. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting because you can make a case that either way, the Eagles are in a good position one year from now to go get another quarterback if he bleeps the bed then you're in a position with a high draft pick and more assets and all that other stuff what if the eagles go 10 and 6 win the division and win a playoff game now you have a quarterback that's proven uh trending in the right direction stock is high still has two more years i believe on that rookie contract that could be the best time to trade him and maybe a pick whatever it may be so my point is We could make an argument that it's very unlikely Jalen Hurts is in Philadelphia two years from now. Either way, however it goes this upcoming year. Yeah, I mean, I I think under that scenario you just laid out, I I don't think the Eagles would trade him because I think it would if if he won ten games with this team, and you know that's ten and seven. That's not that great. You're playing seventeen games, but still, if, if he goes ten and seven. Uh, and wins a playoff game, I, I think that's enough. That's enough to where the Eagles will say, okay, we were supposed to stink up the joint, and he's getting us to double-digit wins and, and a playoff win. Uh, I think that's enough for for the Eagles to say, oh, this is our guy. I, I mean, I think there's a possibility, and that's my whole point. I think there's a possibility that you're grading on a curve, and the Eagles understand there's there's not much you can do. They're not going to be a good football team. So say they win seven games instead of ten, and you're seven and ten, I still think there's a way he can convince them that he's the, he's the future. But that comes with the stuff that isn't as easily identifiable, and that'll be the stuff like, how is he working behind the scenes with Nick Sirianni and Shane Steichen? How is he leading? How is he working? And I, it, that part of the stuff, I don't think there's there's much concern about with the from the Eagles standpoint. They know he's going to work hard. They already saw him last year. Um, they already saw his 
desire to get better. Uh, they know he's a natural leader. They know the guys gravitate towards him. Um, so I think the only thing they need to be convinced upon is the skill set. Uh, does he have the skill set to be a successful NFL quarterback? And, you know, put a gun to my head and I would say no. But he can, he can prove me wrong and he can prove a lot of people wrong. Talking with John McMullen, our NFL Eagles insider, every night at 7.30. John joins us on The Fix. Follow him on Twitter at JF McMullen. Written work at phillyvoice.com and si.com. Listen to him daily, Birds 365, and every Saturday, extending the play on 1490. All right, John, let's uh, transition to the story that came out today regarding the Atlanta Falcons. Now open. Phone lines are open in Atlanta, John to trading the fourth overall draft pick. Yeah, it's really smart uh, from their perspective um, because, you know, you want to take advantage of the quarterback desperate teams. Now it is is absolutely locked in. One, two, three uh, is going to be quarterbacks. Joe Douglas spoke today, virtually confirmed the Jets uh, were taking Zach Wilson because there's no use. um, You know, everybody knows it anyway, so... Uh, there's no use playing the game from that perspective. So you talk about San Francisco, who already moved up to number three. Uh, there's a question on who they will take, but there's no question they're taking a quarterback. Uh, and then you're the Atlanta Falcons at number four, um, and some people speculated that they would take the heir apparent um, to Matt Ryan. But, you know, Matt Ryan played well enough last season to – and we've seen, you know, just football in general, quarterbacks playing later and later, most notably Tom Brady, obviously, but also Drew Brees, Philip Rivers, you know, both of them just retired, but you see to the ages they played to. Um, Matt Ryan has a, at least a couple more seasons in him. So, you know, the Falcons could be looking at uh, Penny Sewell, for instance. I mean, and, and, you know, from their perspective, they can drop down and maybe get a player like that or a Kyle Pitts if they drop back a few spots. Um, so, you know, there's no hurt in taking those phone calls and seeing if there's a really, really quarterback desperate team because you saw the haul Miami got from San Francisco to go all the way up. So they're looking at that and saying, Hey, why not us? So we have to ask, of course, <laughs> how how do the Eagles fit into this, if at all? What are the potential scenarios where this comes into play as it relates to Philadelphia? Now, I, I think the only concern with Philadelphia is you know, how many quarterbacks are going uh, in those top 11 picks. And the hope is all five go. Uh, and if all five go, um, you know, by definition, you're going to get a, a, you know, one of the seven best position players. Uh, and it's evident by the fact that the Eagles move down, uh, that they're comfortable with the players they have in that slot and the options they would have in that slot. Uh, as far as moving back up for a quarterback, they're not going to do that because they want to move down. Uh, if they wanted a quarterback, if they wanted a receiver, they wouldn't have moved down. Um, so it's pretty evident they they're they're looking at the board and they're uh, you know we've talked a lot about their history. Um, so you know offensive line is in the equation. You know defensive line and most likely cornerback. Um, and there's some other you know you're starting to see the Micah Parsons hype train. Uh, pick up, but I don't know, 1979 since the Eagles have taken an off-ball linebacker in the first round, and I don't even know if he's an off-ball linebacker, so I still think that's unlikely. Um, But I I think what is evident is that Howie Roseman is comfortable with what is going to be available 
at 12. And that's why I put names like Bear Tucker out there and Quiddy Payne, hey, which isn't going to excite fans, but I think it excites the Eagles. And that's uh, that's all that matters, as long as they're right. <laughs> as long as they're right. And they've been wrong uh, frequently, at least per the fans. I don't know if they'll ever be right per the fans, um, you know, but nonetheless. Is there any – couple more questions here for you, John, before we let you run. Is there any chance that, you know, that 37th pick, we talked a little bit about about that, that's an important one. Is there any way the Eagles find their way into the bottom part of – the first round with a potential trade. I don't know how they would maneuver that, but yeah, I mean, there, there's, they have enough draft capital to where when you start talking about the later picks and not just 37, but a- anywhere really from that point down, uh, that if, if they see a player, um, that they like and, and um, they kind of understand they're in no man's land, and that player is not going to fall for them. They have the capital to move up a few spots uh, to to get that type of player. So um, I don't know if they'll go back in the first round because that carries with it sort of a penalty, uh, for lack of a better term. If you're going back up, uh, you're gonna as as silly as it sounds, you know, 32 versus 33. Um, that's a big difference, not just the fifth year option, but uh, just from a, a human nature standpoint and, and how people value these picks. So I think it would be more likely to move up from 37 to like 34 if you see a player um, or something of that nature. Uh, but they, they have the ability to do that throughout the draft. And it's the first time in a long time you can say that uh, because you had those two consecutive years when they only had five picks. Now, last year um, was uh, a little bit closer, and they had a, a normal allotment of picks, and this time they have more picks than anybody in the NFL as we stand here right now before the draft. So um, they have as much ability to do that as any team in the NFL. John, what was your thoughts on Aaron Rodgers? You brought it up earlier, but uh, just to get back into it, your thoughts on uh, his performance last night on Jeopardy. Did you watch it, uh, and what did you think? Uh, I didn't watch it. I saw the clips, um, but, <clears throat> I, I mean, it, it's tough, you know. I, I, I think it is interesting. The old adage is you never want to replace the legend you want to be the guy who replaces the legend you want to be the guy who replaces the guy who replaces the legend you get it. yeah um but it's interesting from aaron Rodgers saying i mean think about it just from football he was replacing the legend brett Favre, hmm. in green bay and he's arguably been better um so it doesn't surprise me that he's cocky enough to think he could replace alex trebek um so I think it's a perfect spot for him, and and he wants to do it. Uh, but you know he's going to play football for a while longer, so I don't think they're going to wait for him. So I, I don't think it's going to happen. But I he loves that show. He, he wants to do it. Uh, but I it, it's similar to you know Jimmy Garoppolo replacing Tom Brady in New England. That's what Bill Belichick wanted, but the timing didn't work out. The timing's not going to work out here. Yeah, did you see the contestant uh, have some fun with him there? I forget what the question yeah, was. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Not the field goal, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, you know, uh, obviously uh, Green Bay has had some pretty high-profile uh, uh, brain farts, so to speak, and, and, and pretty high-level playoff situations. And I, and I, I do think, you know, Part of his greatness, and you look at you. I'm sure you've heard over the years, Ryan, that oh, well, they only have one. Uh, you know, such spoiled uh, fans. Because I, as I said, I don't think there's more spoiled fans in the NFL than the Packers, because <laughs> they've had over a quarter century, thirty of years, Hall of Fame quarterback play that went, you know, straight through. Yeah, uh, uh, over a quarter century, and think about all the quarterback desperate teams. 
there are in the NFL every year. Yeah, 30 years. Brett Favre right into Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I don't know how many other situations you can point to that are similar, but uh, unbelievable. All right, John, we're uh, up against it, as we say in the biz. I appreciate it, my friend, and we'll do it again tomorrow night. Follow John on Twitter at JF McMullen, and he's on The Fix every night here at 730 on AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio. Football in Philadelphia is a lifestyle, a passion from birth, and a personal responsibility to know the game. Boo when necessary. And think about B-A-T-L-E-S Eagles! Every second of every minute of every hour of every day. Birds 365 was created for you. Jody Mack, the legendary sports talker, joins forces with NFL insider John McMullen. Birds 365. Start your morning with Johnny Mack and Jody Mack across the Jacob Media Network. Watch it live on YouTube.